Welcome back, I guess I should say. Let me just start off by saying, on the last episode, I made mention of Bo Derek, and I know it's weird to be talking about Bo Derek on two episodes in a row, or to be talking about Bo Derek at all, as a matter of fact. But <laughs> I did bring her up in the last episode, and during the course of talking about her, I mentioned the quote that she made, and I compared it to something, I compared something that she said to like rappers who rap about killing people and, and bitches and all of this stuff and then thanking God at the BET Awards. What's funny about that is when I said that, I had no idea that the BET Awards happened over this past weekend. And don't worry, this is not an episode about the BET Awards. So don't worry about that. <laughs> because if you're like me, if you did watch any of it, you know, anyway. But I had no idea that the BET Awards were happening. And it was funny because as I watched the bit of it that I did, it was funny because it was exactly like I said, it was a whole bunch of people winning awards for doing some foul stuff and then like thanking God for it. And as a matter of fact, it's like Lil Baby and for people who aren't familiar with Lil Baby, I'm not even gonna go into who Lil Baby is. Just the fact that any grown man refers to himself as Lil, that's a problem in and of itself, but that's what seems to be what rappers do. So, hey, see, now I'm sounding like the get off my lawn guy. Anyway, Lil Baby and Kurt Franklin actually performed a song together, which was interesting. But again, you know, hey, I say again because I referred to this last week, everybody has their own relationship with God and far be it from me to criticize or act judgmental even after I was just critical and judgmental but anyway other than that like I said this is an episode about the BET Awards and there was really nothing else that happened on that show that was worth talking about that it was just funny to me that bringing up the BET Awards which is never on my mind and then all of a sudden the BET Awards are coming on who knew I will say one thing though about the BET Awards though after just saying that there was nothing worth talking about, um, Andrew Day did get an award. So, and for anybody who listened to the sex sex addiction sex addiction episode, the one where it sounded like I was whispering because I was trying out new technology, but it was actually a good episode, if I may say so myself. But for anybody that listened to that episode, you all know that I'm now like in love with Andrew Day ever since she mentioned that she used to have a sexual addiction. It's like, I really do love her. But before I read about the sex addiction thing, I never even looked at that chick. So it's funny now, it's like, I'm seeing her all over the place and all of a sudden I'm like this huge fan of hers. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting that I didn't even know that it was coming on and stuff. And I made reference to it before it came on. I wish I could like, um, think about think like that in terms of the lotto I think of these numbers and then they wound up being the lottery numbers but anyway now that I'm thinking about it though it's funny because I never watch BET anymore and that just popped in my head talking about the BET awards it's like it's like and I, I used to watch TV from BET from way back in the day like does anybody out there like listening to this or watching this like remember like back in the day when you would be flipping channels and for some reason that I have no idea why when you would get to BET the volume would be really low so you have to turn it up louder than you normally would for other channels to to hear what was going on on BET <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was funny to me but yeah, I used to I used to live BT Rap City, the Mayor Chris Thomas and Video Soul and all that. And yeah, you old, you old if you remember like Donnie Simpson and Sherry Carter from Video Soul and Rachel from Caribbean Rhythms. Like every guy had a crush on her. Um, and Ananda from Teen Summit. It's like now I don't even know what channel BET is on. It's like gun to my head. It's like on direct TV, I'm guessing like it's between like channels 328 and 330 something. So I don't even know, boy, I guess it just speaks to age, maturity, whatever you want to call it. And it's like the same thing with MTV though, now that I'm really thinking about it, because it's like, 
even after MTV stopped showing videos and all of that, and they went to that reality show format with the real world and role rules and the challenges, I still used to watch that. The whole idea back in the day of having cable without BET and MTV was just like a foreign concept to me. But that was then, and this was now, this is now, not anymore. But like I said, I didn't, I didn't bring any of that up because I wanted to talk about MTV or BET. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the purpose of this. It was just, again, I found that interesting, the Bo Derek thing, and I mentioned the BET Awards. But anyway, what I do want to talk about today is health. And I'm hoping that you all are like listening to this saying like, you're talking about health again? Like, you're always talking about health. You're always lecturing people about health and all of that. But nah, I don't really think, it, well, I don't think, but no, it's not really about that. It's like, I'm not lecturing anybody. I accept that old people are going to do what they want to do, even if, it's, even if it's not in their best interest. So I'm not even on that. But it's just interesting to me and funny when looking at health from an older perspective versus when I was a lot younger. And the reason I bring that up and the purpose of this episode or the topic of this episode comes up because I had my annual physical yesterday. And while there isn't a whole lot that was worth mentioning with, with regard to that, it's like, besides the good news um, in my doctor saying that because of advancements in technology that he wouldn't have to stick his finger up my butt to check my prostate anymore. So <laughs> that was good news. It's just funny to me because when I talk to women about getting my prostate checked in the process, like all men, obviously they can empathize with that because the whole idea of somebody putting a finger up your butt is not the most appealing thing if you're a guy. Now, I do understand that it might be to some guys, but even to those guys where it might be appealing, in that clinical setting, the way that goes, I'm sure that even if you enjoy that in your recreational time, you wouldn't enjoy that in a doctor's office in the way that it's been done to me. That message is just a violation. Anyway, but women have no sympathy to me for me. It's like everything that um every time I mention like get my prostate checked to a woman, they immediately go to, oh, that's nothing. You don't know what we have to go to put our feet up in stirrups and they stick these cold poles all up in you and 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 all of this, and we got to get mammograms when they smush our breasts, and that hurts, and all of this, and yeah, ladies, I, I sympathize with you in your plight, but all I'm saying is, can't we both have it bad? It's like, do we have to, like, go through the whole process of who can top the other in terms of bad physical experiences and stuff like that? Ladies, I acknowledge that it is not the most pleasant thing, I imagine, to get cold metal tubes stuck up your vagina and to have your breasts crushed in a machine to make sure that you don't have lumps in them. And I would like to think that you can also sympathize with us and the way that the things that we have to go through mentally when a, a doctor tells you to like grab your knees and pull them to your chest so he can stick his finger up, up your butthole. So we can both have it bad. It doesn't have to be a competition. <laughs> but the thing about it while I'm on this topic is that now I don't have to get the finger, but now I have to get colonoscopies. And I guess women have to get them too. But still, I'm thinking I'm in the clear now. I don't have to worry about anything going up my butt anymore. But now it's like replaced by like a whole different kind of tool with a camera that goes up your butt. It's like, it's like you can, it's like life. It seems, or at least I'm just speaking for myself. You can never like get like just straight good news. It seems like good news, especially in this day and age, everything has to come with something bad, you know? You win the lottery or something like that. And then you have to deal with your ungrateful family members. It's like, there's always something. It's like, if you if they the government increases social programs, then there's a fight to see how is it gonna get paid for. It, you can never just have something good. I just can't have like no more fingers and just be like, okay, my butt is safe and off limits. It's just replaced by something else 
which leaves me with a little bit more dignity because they knocked me out. But <laughs> still, it doesn't strike me as the most unpleasant thing. I hadn't had it yet, but I'm going to have it. But anyway, yeah, I got off on the thing on that. That that I didn't mean to go that far with that. <laughs> but the point in bringing all of this up and how it relates to dating relationships and all of that stuff, because this is dating while adulting. And I like to talk about relationships and things from a relationship perspective or a dating perspective or something like that. And how this relates to that is that while I was at that physical, I was going through the whole Q and a process um, with my doctor and for people to get physicals, unfortunately, not enough men. That's why I'm going through the process of explaining it because everybody should get physicals. But for some reason, men don't get physicals, especially black men, but I don't even want to go down that road. Y'all need to get physicals. But anyway, you, you have a conversation with your doctor and he just talks to you about what you've been doing, how you've been living over the past year, trying to get a feeling for anything that he might need to like do a deeper dive on, anything that he might need to check just to keep keep the car on the road basically and we were having that conversation you smoke you drink you do this how often do you exercise all that good stuff you've been feeling any pains anything like that and then standard stuff standard stuff and then he like hit me with something that kind of threw me off he asked me and this speaks to again dating while ad adulting dating for grown folks dating for grown-ups and this is the type of stuff that you hear on this particular podcast because this never happened to me before. He asked me, so how are your erections? I, my, my honest response was, I said to him, I don't understand the question. It kind of caught me off guard because I was like, are you asking me, does it hurt when I have them? It's like, what are we talking about here? And then he was like, nah, it's like, are you still having them? I was like, oh, and then, and then I was like, so uh, do you know something about me that I don't? It's like, and do you, can you look at me and tell something? Are you telling me something? It's like, you hadn't even taken my blood, blood yet. So, so where is this coming from? And that made him laugh. It kind of reminds me one time when I was at Publix once and I got my groceries and stuff like that. And I paid for the groceries and do the bag, the groceries. He asked me, he was like, yo, so do you need some help getting these to your car? And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what you looking at me? And I look like somebody, you can't get my groceries to the car. It's like, what are you saying? And so just like the doctor, he didn't mean it any kind of way. It's just like the standard thing that you ask people, I guess that look of a certain age, but I took that some kind of way. And when the doctor took, asked me that question about my erections, I took that some kind of ways too. But the cool thing is we got a good laugh at it. And, and then he got serious and it was funny to me because he was like, nah, seriously, I can prescribe something for you if you need it. And it like turned into what was starting to sound like some kind of like back alley drug deal or something. It, it was just weird. And then it's like, when I told him like, nah, I'm good, man. Thanks for offering though. <laughs> it's like, then he started lecturing me about male pride and stuff like that. Talking about how men are too ashamed to speak up and he got me, you know, they do it in a discreet way and stuff like that. Even though I don't really know how discreet it is because he would describe prescribe something for you and inevitably you would have to take that to a pharmacist who would know, but I guess, I don't know. I guess that's why more people don't speak up. I guess that speaks to his point because it can only be so discreet or whatever. But yeah, he was giving me this lecture and stuff like that. And then again, what kind of put me off was he acted kind of surprised when I was like, nah, for real, I'm, I'm good on that. I still get more than wood, which probably is too much information. I'm sorry for that. But I was like, nah, I'm good. So it was like, like I said, he acted surprised, but then he also acted surprised that I don't need glasses. 
And those two things aren't connected in any way, um, not being able to get erections and needing glasses. It was just weird to me that those are the two things in the physical that surprised him out of all of the things that he could have been surprised by. I would, I don't know. anyway, anyway, anyway. But again, like I said, that speaks to the demographic of this podcast. The fact that I'm being pressured by a doctor to take dick pills. Boy, I tell you what, never imagined that 30 years ago. <laughs> never thought that'd be the conversation I'd be having. Nope, not even, not even. Anyway, so with that said, with dick pills, it, well, let me back up. It does make me wonder because with dick pills being so easily accessible nowadays, there is no reason for that women shouldn't be getting their backs blown out like all the time by their men. I hear so many women talking about their men not doing this, their men not doing that. If you can get dick pills that easily, because I would think even if a dude isn't in the mood, still, you take a dick pic, you get stiff and shoo, you good to go. So there shouldn't be any excuse why women should be complaining about not having enough sex. But nah, 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 nah. Now that I'm thinking about it, there are two things I get, well... Yeah, there are two things I can think of right off the top of my head being reasons that, you know, women are having those complaints. One is because, like I said earlier, men don't go to the doctor, specifically black men don't go to the doctor, which is another thing, like I said, I won't go into, but we need to go to the doctor. Come on, y'all. It, it won't kill you. Not going to the doctor might kill you, though. So that's one reason. So if you don't go to the doctor, you won't know how easily accessible pills are. That's one. Or I guess from what I hear, if you have a heart condition or if you have high blood pressure or any kind of blood pressure issue, you can't take the pills. So that could be another thing. So yeah, I'm sorry, ladies. I was trying to sympathize with you all. I was trying to look out for you and put you up on game, but I guess not considering those two things. I mean, shoot, yeah, so anyway go go back go back to just ignore what i just said and speaking of ignoring what i just said what's funny is that if i if i did need the dick pills everything that i just talked about over the past five minutes i probably wouldn't have mentioned because if i needed dick pills i probably wouldn't have come on here and told you all that i got dick pills yeah so Thankfully, I don't need them because otherwise I would be searching for like five minutes of extra content that and fishing around for what I'm going to talk about. But anyway, so again, this is about health, but not lecturing you except for black men in this case needing to go to the doctor more often. But that's not even a lecture. That's just me stating something and I'm just leaving it there. So health. Now that's my health and that's talking about men and health, but let me transition to the ladies. <laughs> Salma Hayek, and for people that don't know, me and Reggie talked about Salma, Salma Hayek a while ago in one of the episodes of the podcast. And I shouted her out because she's 54 and she still looks good for her age. She's still getting it done. And for people that know, don't know, she's an actress and stuff like that blah, blah, blah. But the reason I bring her up on this particular episode talking about health is because she was on Jada Pinkett Smith's episode of the Red Table Talk. And I think pretty much everybody knows what Red Table Talk is. But for the few people that don't, it's a show that she does on Facebook with her daughter and her mother. And they talk about some women shit. I don't know what they talk about. Honestly, I've never watched a full episode of that joint. So I can't really get too detailed in what it is. But obviously, I'm aware of it. But um, if nothing else, the, the Red Table Talk is known for, the, for coining the phrase situationship, which is how Jada Pinkett Smith described her affair with August Alsina back in the day. So that, oh, and speaking of which, yeah. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I honestly, Salma Hyde was on the show and honestly, I had no interest in 99% of that mess. As a matter of fact, I've never watched a full episode of that joint, except for the one where Jada Pika Smith had Will Smith on the show so they could talk about the August Alcina thing, affair or whatever. So I watched that. 
But before that and since then, I haven't watched any of that mess. But when hearing that sound, the hike was going to be on, I caught some things. And one of the things that I caught, again, that applies to this episode, is that Jada asked Salma about her breasts. And she specifically asked if she had had like an augmentation, if she'd had an enhancement. And Salma said no, that her breast size but she did acknowledge that her breast size had increased though, but did not have any kind of surgery or any kind of work done. But here's where it gets interesting, at least to me. She said that the increase in her size is due to menopause. Interesting. Now, at the risk of sounding like the typical Neanderthal dude and all of that, I have to say, you know, that's the first time that I had heard any benefit of menopause. And ladies, I'm sure that y'all are rolling your eyes while listening, when you listening to the comment that you just heard that I just made. And I apologize, but that's one of those sorry, not sorry things. I'm really not sorry because, you know, I see it as a positive because bigger breasts attract men and that makes women more appealing to men. Well, some men, because if your man is an ass man, like most black men are, well, that's not really even fair because white guys are increasingly growing to like learning and growing and appreciate ass too. So ass is in nowadays and it has been for a nice little minute. But the point is, if your man is an ass man, I can't help you with that. But I don't, yeah, I don't think she didn't mention anything about the ass getting bigger during menopause so yeah for women who don't have big breasts yeah i mean who don't have big asses yeah i can't help you with that actually i can't help you with any of it but i will say with me being a breast man personally i appreciate it and to me it seems like that's a benefit of going through menopause seems like the only benefit of going through menopause so Take that for whatever it's worth. <laughs> so whether you're a man and you're being asked if you being asked if you need dick pill, pills or if you're getting bigger breasts because of menopause, the bottom line is still the same. And the bottom line is, man, we're getting old. Well, no, actually, you're getting old. I feel good. And my lab work came back and it says that I'm good. So y'all are getting old <laughs> yeah but with that said so that's so men's health women's health now i want to talk about two more things and this kind of gets a little bit more serious all jokes aside um i want to talk about kat zingano and for people that don't know kat zingano she's an mma fighter and i follow her on instagram she has breast implants. And my first thought is that, and probably your first thought is, that's kind of odd for an MMA fighter to have breast implants because it seems like that would affect your performance negatively. But I guess that's neither here nor there. But the reason I bring Kat up is because she put up this lengthy, long, lengthy, long, she put up this long Instagram post talking about how her hormones were all over the place and how she had low estrogen levels. And she talked about the struggles that she had cutting weight when she was preparing for fights and, and other things that were just abnormal health-wise. And she made excuses for them and all of that stuff. And then she finally started going to doctors to see, yo, what is, what is wrong with me? And she went from doctor to doctor and she got test after test and they didn't really tell her anything. Um, they, some of them actually led her to believe that that's just the process that a woman goes through. You're getting older, your body's changing, all of that stuff. And she went with that. And then one night she was watching TV and she said while she was watching TV, she saw, she saw an interview with another female athlete. I don't think it was an MMA fighter, but some, she was, I think she was a track athlete. It doesn't matter though. But she talked about having the same issues that affected her performance on the track. And 
what she found out was that it was related to, it was directly tied to her having implants to track athlete. And when she had them removed, things like changed and she performed better and blah, blah, blah. And that prompted Kat to get her implants removed. And that was the point of the whole story. She got her implants removed. I guess she won't be fighting for a while, obviously, until she heals up. But that was the thing. Now, I don't want to get out of line. And it's important to note that I am ignorant to a lot of things that women do, a lot of things that women say. I am ignorant to, about women. And unlike a lot of these people that claim to be dating experts and relationship experts and think like a man and the Steve Harveys of the world that can tell women about, tell women about men, but can also tell men about women and all of that stuff. The thing about me is I readily admit that I have no idea what women think, how they do anything about that half the time. I know men really well, exceptionally well, and I can tell women about men. But man, I can, women, y'all are the great mystery. So with that said, speaking out of ignorance, like I said, I don't know half of why women do some of the things that they do to enhance themselves. It's like, I feel like the majority of things that women do have nothing to do with men. And it, seem, and it seems to have more with either women trying to impress other women or for their own self-esteem. But like, regardless, regardless of what it has to do with, we need to stop looking at unnatural things to make us feel better about ourselves. It's like Botox and collagen and lip and 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 implants in all kind of various places in the body and stuff like that and even things that aren't cosmetic is like like even like waist trainers it's like i read articles about how those things like put unhealthy pressure on your organs and stuff like that and every day i see people walking around um, with a stick and a waist trainer strapped to their stomach why they're carrying a stick, I don't know. But anyway, but yeah. And I've read articles, just like the waist trainer, I've read articles about negative effects of all of those things, implants, collagen, Botox, all of that stuff. And it reminds me of like K. Michelle. K. Michelle, the singer who was on um, one of those BET reality shows, I think one of the Love and Hip Hops or something like that. She had butt implants and the butt implants went bad and there was a documentary. She became an advocate for people like living their natural things and not getting implants because hers got infected and had all kinds of strange effects on her body and stuff like that. And she, there was a documentary about her detail in the process. I'm um, like, I think I just said, and, and, and then I think back to like, Kanye West's mother passed because she went to Brazil to get butt implants or something, something crazy like that. And it didn't go well for her, obviously. And it's just, it's just tripped out going back to the K. Michelle thing because K. Michelle is an attractive woman. I don't think anybody would have looked at K. Michelle, any man would have looked at K. Michelle and said, yo, she really does need a bigger butt. But Obviously, she felt that she did, but it's just weird watching attractive, beautiful women like her and like, like Lil' Kim, going back to the BET Awards, and again, I'm making another reference to the BET Awards, but Lil' Kim was on the BET Awards, and it's just like, wow, I, I, I don't want to get started on that because I don't, I don't I, yeah, I don't want to get started on, on that. You guys get what I'm saying, though. It's like, it's, it's just tripped out. But I will say, going back to that K. Michelle documentary, that, man, after seeing that documentary, that mess was so, ooh, she went in detail, showing scars, showing what it looked like, the infection and stuff like that. Man, that mess made me not want to have sex for a week. Well, no, nah, nah, I wouldn't say quite a week, but you get what I'm saying. 
the point is that we need to embrace our natural selves. And when I say we, I'm talking about women, to be honest, because men, we don't really get enhancements like that, even though I'm seeing that some people are getting some things done, which is odd, but for the most part, implants and enhancements and things like that, surgeries and stuff like that, that's, I would say, good 90 eight percent women so i think it's safe to say that that's a woman thing as a matter of fact the only thing that i can think of that men get are like dick implants and stuff like that and that's kind of different because that goes like beyond an enhancement like a, a, a butt or some breasts or something like that that's more about aesthetics it's like they look good but they don't really serve any real purpose I guess breasts do, like if you have kids, but that has nothing to do with getting a bigger versus smaller. So it's basically just aesthetics, the way you look in, look in clothes, things like that. But a dick is functional. If your dick is, if your dick is too small, that's a relationship issue, going back to the purpose of this podcast. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to give a man a pass if he goes that route and gets it and gets a dick implant because that's like I said beyond an enhancement yeah you have serious problems that you need to correct and that's one way to correct it even though I don't really know how well those implants work anyway but yeah the point anyway ladies you don't need that stuff trust me trust me when I say this is a man speaking to you. Trust me when I say that a flat stomach can make up for a lot of things that you might think that you can get from a breast or butt enhancement or augmentation, which is the same thing. And a flat stomach can be gotten in the gym. So just a little bit of hard work, dedication, eating right, and save yourself a whole lot of money and save yourself a whole lot of long-term care because even if you get breast implants i've heard that you have to get them touched up or redone ever so often like 10 years or so it's like man you got unsafe stuff in your body and then to know that you're gonna have to go through that process every 10 years who wants to go through surgery every 10 years Anyway, see, now this is starting to like sound like more of a lecture, and that's what I don't want to do. So I'll get off of that. The last thing that I want to talk about, and this goes into the whole theme of health, is I want to talk about, and again, this is speaking seriously as well, I want to talk about Shock G of Digital Underground, <clears throat> Humpty Dance, and all that stuff. And I know I mentioned him in a past episode, I think the last time that I was lecturing you all about health and being healthy, I mentioned him, or it might have been another episode, I'm not 100% sure. But in the midst of that episode, it, he had passed, Black Rob had passed, DMX had passed, all in that same time frame. So you know, it's like people say when they pass, it all happens in threes and stuff like that. And I talked about the need to take care of yourselves. I know I mentioned that in that episode, whether it was about health or not. But I bring him up again because I saw that the autopsy report came back on him. And he had in his system alcohol, which isn't, I know, isn't the worst thing in the world. Meth, which is kind of bad. And then fentanyl, which is horrible. All three of those things were found in his system. Now, I don't know if... I don't know if you all know the seriousness of fentanyl, but it's not like the regular run of the mill recreational drug. You know, that's the drug that you take recreationally when you want to get as close to death as possible, basically. And then that's not enough for you. You're combining that with meth and alcohol. Sheesh. Now check it, this isn't to like crap on Shock G. That's definitely not what I'm meaning to do. Take Shock G out of it and insert anyone because there are other rappers that um, are dying off of fentanyl in particular. I believe that Juice World 
now getting in the weeds. I know nobody listening to this podcast knows who Juice World is, but he was another rapper that had fentanyl in his system and he died. But what it is, and the reason I'm bringing this up in, on this episode talking about health is because it's a call to anyone who is struggling with anything to seek whatever help you need. Because I would, because while I'm not one of those people that sees death as the worst thing in the world, I really do believe in heaven. I believe in heaven, that heaven is way better than anything that we can experience on this earth, even the highest highs. So the idea of death isn't something that like bugs me out or trips me out or anything. But I'm guessing that in Shock G's case, that if he had a choice in the matter, he probably would have chosen to live longer than 58 years old. But now that I'm saying that, maybe he didn't. Come to think of it with all of that stuff in his system, maybe he wanted to die. That's a real possibility, especially in the era that we're living in. But anyway, all right. I'm gonna get off that and I'll just end by saying, man, love yourselves, people. We all need to love ourselves. And let me clarify, when I'm talking about love yourself, love yourself in a way that isn't hurtful to other people. It's like too many people in this day and age in the times that we live in, they see self-love partially as shitting on other people, you know, to preserve themselves and their own mental health. But you can love yourself and you can be kind too while you're loving yourself. You can be kind and you can be kind to be honest. It's kind of like the whole, like, you can be just be, you can just be honest without being cruel. It's like when somebody says, I'm just being honest, it usually comes, it usually comes right after they've said something hurtful or right before they're about to say something hurtful. So you can just be honest without being cruel and hurtful to someone. But with that said, yeah, I'm done. I see that wasn't too bad. That, that lecture wasn't too bad. I mean, come on now, give it up. Y'all know I'm speaking the truth on some of that stuff, on all of that stuff, whether you want to admit it or not. Come on. Anyway, I am done for the day. Go about your day. Live life and prosper. Say goodbye, Reggie. Well, Reggie didn't say anything, so I'll say goodbye. Hit the music. Well, the music is already playing, so I'll just say goodbye.